got the flag that on. So YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and somebody's name who's been hot in these NFL streets is Julio Jones. And so many of us have so many different theories and reasons why we feel he should go to this team, that team, this team, that team. But why should he come to the Baltimore Ravens? And why should he not come to the Baltimore Ravens? In this video, we're here to discuss both the good and the bad reasons for the Ravens possibly acquiring Julio Jones. But I couldn't do this one alone. On this video, I have a special guest joining me. So let's go ahead and introduce him. Team, keep it clean. On today's episode, we are going to have special guest DTV. So let the people know who you are, where they can find you, and really the whole night. Hi, uh, it's your boy DTV. If you're familiar with my channel, you already know how I do things. Um, but you can find me on YouTube at DTV. That's DT space V I D S. You can also find me on Twitter at Tariq5. That's T A I R E K and the number five. And what made you um what made you start doing YouTube? Uh big fan of yours for a while, engraving. Uh watch how your channel grew and it's continue to grow and continues to grow and i was like i have a lot of thoughts that i need to get off my chest as well that i need to get out to the world <laughs> um i've been watching the sports since a child baltimore ravens has always been my favorite team mm -hmm. and i was like i'm gonna build the courage to start my channel you know i like what engraving has done i've watched him come from pretty much from the ground up and it's very inspiring so i just jumped out there and started putting my thoughts out there and here we are now, i appreciate that for sure too and one thing that i remember about you um you always had different takes mm -hmm. but like like out of the box takes but they would make sense and um right. one one of my favorite ones from yours was uh I mean, yeah, you, you had a couple that actually like really came to fruition and some big ones that came to fruition. And I remember one of the ones that you were on big time. And I appreciate you supporting the channel for so long. And this uh, just give me a reminder uh, just how long you've been around for. Um, I remember back in 2018 pre-draft Orlando Brown Jr. He had a bad combine, bad combine. Yeah. That's correct. And you were like, Ravens need to get this dude. Ravens need to pick him up. This right. guy got first round talent. Ravens need to get on this for real. That you were saying cool. that over and over and over again. And I was like, okay, cool. That'd be cool. Be like sentimental too with his father. He played for the Ravens and whatnot. And then it happened. And I was right. like, oh, okay. Well, this, <laughs> this guy's on to something. Then I believe too, it was you um, who, who brought up the RG3. Mm -hmm. uh, when the Ravens signed RG3, how it was sort of them sort of going in a different direction. And that could have possibly been an indication that they were going to draft Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. So, yeah, man, you, you you be on it, man. So I'm, I'm glad you uh you started running that YouTube channel again. So yeah. Got my little Houdini hat on, just, you know, kind of see the future, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, that's 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 cool, man, because it's always cool. When, um, and this is stuff that I, I had not thought about, man. And uh, it's, it's always nice to see when people like they, they think about stuff and they think outside the box, but it's not so outside the box to where it doesn't make sense. Exactly. It's just something that uh, most people might not really be thinking about like that. that uh, so keep that keep that up, man. Um, now, something that we, we've talked about a little bit offline um, and that a lot of people have been talking about, too, is Julio Jones. Of course, Julio Jones, it was out. Uh, came out yesterday that he was on air live with Shannon Sharp, and he talked about with the Falcons. He said, I'm out of there. Um, now, I don't believe that this was some random phone call or anything like that. I'm pretty sure Julio knew that he was being recorded and whatnot, and it was on TV. Um, but first, where do you think some logical trade destinations for Julio Jones could be? Uh, off the top of my head, of course, you know, I'm going to go Baltimore first. Um Tennessee Titans would make sense mm. as well. That would be nasty. Yeah, I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, <laughs> who else? Name Baltimore, name Tennessee. Um, the Colts. The Colts that's the that's the one that I, I I've picked. The Colts. And I'm hearing also the Patriots. I I could see it, but I kind of I, I kind of don't see it with the situation that they're in. Like they they don't really know what quarterback they want to go with. Yeah, um do you, point. Do you, they they signed so many what well, they signed so many wide receivers in the off season you know with contracts and things like that um but i mean you still could go for julio if you wanted but you do bring julio in and you don't really know who your quarterback is going to be and you don't really know what you're going to get out of your rookie quarterback so do you 
take on that salary cap and mm -hmm. at that age just to have a man and you really don't know if you're set or QB. So oh, so that that's a good they go another one of them points, man. That's a real good point. Now, one of the teams you mentioned. Uh, of course, being the Baltimore Ravens, they know who their quarterback is. They know who their guy is. Uh, what are some of the reasons why you feel like Julio would be a good fit for the Baltimore Ravens? Um, because it's impossible to stop Lamar already. Mm. Like, he's putting up uh, amazing numbers with wide receivers who, you know, well, not all, but majority of the wide receivers probably wouldn't start on – another team in a sense mm. like just think about it when when flacco was here i mean the offense wasn't really well at the end of his career those same kind of players that we had a wide receiver flacco had and we was like what four and five and mm. the offense was like at the bottom of the league the offensive line was considered terrible um yeah. we was just not going nowhere and then when lamar came in with that same cast and he went what 71 and made the playoffs and the offense was like at the top of the league and everything was just mm -hmm. wide open and then the following year where he comes in and he wins a unanimous mvp mm -hmm. and with that same offense and it was the number one offense you know so he he took that cast from being at the bottom of the league and he took that cast and elevated them to the top mm -hmm. so now why not give lamar actual talent that makes defensive coordinators have to adjust their defense because with the wide receivers that uh, we previously had, like they knew we just have to stop Lamar. We can crowd the box, put 10 in the box, put 11 in the box. We don't care about the other wide receivers. We don't mm -hmm. care. We don't trust them to beat us. Mm -hmm. But who gives us the biggest threat to beat us? Lamar Jackson. So as a defensive coordinator, they're coming in like, oh, no, we don't care about the wide receivers. Let's put 10 and 11 in the box. Let's have our corners put their backs to the sidelines and let's watch the quarterback. We don't, really, mm. we don't even care if the wide receivers, quote, unquote, run past us in a sense because that's not our biggest threat. Our biggest threat is that quarterback. So let's run court, cover one. Let's either put one safety back or let's just bring everybody in the box. That is disrespectful. That is mm. disrespectful to the NFL wide receivers. It's like, but why would you not do that if I'm the defensive coordinator? So can we please give Lamar Jackson a wide receiver that can come in and make the defensive coordinator say, okay, we can't run cover one. Mm. We can't put our backs to the sideline against Julio Jones. We have to respect this wide receiver out here. We have to stay in double high safety because we cannot go one-on-one -on -one with Julio Jones. That'll make life so much easier for yeah. the wide receivers that we have now and the quarterback because you can kind of dictate coverage in a sense. And you can kind of know what they want to do and what they don't want to do. And you give Lamar Jackson, Julio Jones, he doesn't have to wait that split second to be like, well, is mm. he going to get open? Because I don't trust him to get open against this corner. Well, Julio Jones, you're like, nine times out of ten, when I take my three-step drop, he's going to beat his corner. Yeah. Give, That's true. give Lamar Jackson a guy like that. You see, Baker Mayfield has that. You know, you got he got Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Mm -hmm. He has two wide receivers that you know nine times out of ten, He's going to win against his matchup. So he's comfortable in his three-step and five-step and just looking up and firing out there because he trusts the talent of those wide receivers. Right. What Lamar Jackson has right now, he don't really trust in a sense. He don't really trust as much as he would if he had a Julio Jones. And I hear people saying, well, we just drafted Rashad Bateman and we drafted Tylon Wallace and those guys, and we're good. And I'm like, are we? <laughs> We don't know what we have in those guys. We see what they did in college, but as we know, NFL is a whole different animal. That's true. Give Lamar Jackson a proven elite wide receiver that will make life so much easier for Lamar Jackson and the young wide receivers. Right. You don't have to bring Rashad Bateman in and say, you're our number one. We need you to be our number one. We need you to beat number one corners. That's a lot of pressure. Mm. I think that's a lot of times that's where we as an organization come in and kind of fail. It's like when we had, um, what's your favorite guy? Oh, uh, Rashad Perryman. Perryman. Yeah, <laughs> we come in and we were looking at him like, okay, this is the guy. 6'3", 6'4", 3 He's the guy. That's straight pressure from the beginning. Like, it is. Give our guys a chance to come in and not have pressure, be able to look up to an elite wide receiver. You can even have Rashad Bateman go into the slot, mm -hmm. you know, and he can go up against the number three corner. Let him build his confidence. And as uh, mm. 
And as Julio Jones ages out, you can then slide Rashad Bateman onto the one. Right. He already built his confidence. He already went against NFL corners, and he's already made some noise. Oh, so yeah. that's how I look at it. Yeah, I, I agree. And especially with the part with Julio, you bring in a Julio Jones, like he's that guy. Like you said, he's a proven guy. Yeah. It's not question marks on, all over Julio Jones' head like, oh, can he compete in the NFL? What can he do against number one? No, we know what he can do. Uh, the biggest question mark about him is, is obviously the injuries. Is he going to be able to stay healthy? Is he going to be able to maintain? Um, but, yeah, I, I love the point that you made about Lamar and the three-step drop back. He dropped back and, oh, Julio, boom. Got him. I'm hitting him. And that builds Lamar's confidence and Lamar's trust in all of his guys. Mm -hmm. Now, with Julio, too, one of my favorite things about the possibility of bringing in a Julio Jones would be what he would do for literally everybody else, man. What he would do for all the wide receivers, what he would do for the tight ends, too, what he would do for the runner. He would just open up the field that much more, man. Everybody. Because, you like, you come out in the spread, man. You got Julio, you got Hollywood, you got Bateman, you got Watkins, and, and you got your running back. You got whether it's J.K. or Gus, or, or you throw Mark Andrews in there, too. It's like, who do you go? Who do you cover? Who do you double team? Who, you do, who one, is your priority, man? You have one it, one it's like with Lamar Jackson. I know we, um, you, just, you just spoke about it. Um, about how it was prior to Lamar Jackson. And this obviously ain't no disrespect to Flacco, but it just was what it was prior to Lamar. That same season, 2018, Ravens were four and five. And in the previous years, uh, I believe I saw the statistic that Warren uh, Sharp put out today where he said they were like 40 and 40, yeah. something like that. But it, 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 bottom line, it wasn't looking good prior to Lamar. Um, so with that being said, this this guy just... He changed the game, and he spoiled us. He spoiled us like crazy. Yeah. Uh, and he's lost, I want to say, seven games total in a regular season. Yeah. It, it's some crazy low number. But yeah, 30 and 7, something like that. 30 and 7, yeah, like he, that. He, he spoiled us like crazy. So Ravens, again, he's still on his rookie contract. So this would be a great opportunity uh, <laughs> for the Ravens to, like, really show if they could seal that deal. Like, cause, cause we've known they they tried. They tried with Adam Thielen. They tried with DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, they they tried with um with Juju Smith Schuster. They tried with T. Y. Hilton. They tried with Zach Ertz. So they tried to bring in some guys, and even minus Zach Ertz, we're just speaking about receivers specifically. But they tried to bring in guys both via trade, and it failed, and through free agency, and it failed. Uh, but Julio went on that phone call with Shannon Sharp on that mysterious random phone call with Shannon Sharp. Right. Um, my favorite part of it wasn't even about him down in the Cowboys. It wasn't even about him saying I'm out of there when it came to the Falcons. My favorite part about the Julio thing was him saying, I want to win. I want to win. There it is. And with the Ravens, whenever you look at the Baltimore Ravens, Regular season, nobody's worried about the Ravens in the regular season because they know the Ravens are going to do their thing in the regular season. Everybody's biggest question is what are they going to do in the playoffs? Now, we've seen the past two playoff years. Hollywood, he's been doing this thing. Playoff Hollywood, a different animal, man. That is true. He's been doing this thing. But who else is it going to be? Who else is going to step up? So I do think we certainly improved the wide receiver room with the addition of Rashad Bateman, with the addition of Sammy Watkins, too. And then with Tylen Wallace as well, but like you mentioned before, there is a lot of unknown. And, and I love that point that you brought out about those rookie receivers, like more so Rashad Bateman. If he's brought in and asked, hey, can you be the number one guy? He'll have to go up against number one corners. And not that he wouldn't be able to beat them, but making that jump from college to the pros, it's a whole nother animal. And it really uh, doesn't, so, and it really doesn't, uh, and it really doesn't I don't want to say it really doesn't kind of like help Lamar in a sense because you continue to bring in rookies and you continually want them to beat them on corners. Corners, Lamar Jackson still doesn't have that full trust in him yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like we continue to waste years on trying to build, trying to bring in wide receivers that Lamar Jackson can finally trust. You go get Julio Jones. Lamar Jackson already trusts him before he comes in the door. It's like, why do we waste Lamar Jackson years on his legs while he runs a 4-2 right now? Why are we wasting these years to try to continue to, you know, build wide receivers to, to eventually become a number one that we don't know instead of just going to get a number one? And we know as soon as he walks into the door, he's a number one wide receiver. 
Now you have a number one wide receiver that's one of the best in the game that you can pair with Hollywood that shows off in the playoffs, and you can pair him with a guy in the backfield that runs in 4-2. And start of waiting another three years to see if Bateman uh, be, becomes that number one, and now Lamar Jackson is now running a 4-5. Or if he doesn't become a number one, now you – back in the same place and you now you're going to look for another wide receiver and now lamar jackson is running the four seven in years uh, in six more years capitalize on lamar jackson's talents now teams are already struggling to try to stop lamar right let's go over the top and give him more give him julio jones so now teams are just like well i don't it's nothing we can do it was almost nothing you can do anyway but now it's just like what like is this not fair I want to feel like the Chiefs felt when they had Tyree Hill, you know, Travis Kelce, <laughs> Hartman, uh, Sammy Watkins, all of those guys. Yeah. I want to feel like that as, as a fan base. Like, we know you're coming in, and we know there's nothing you can do. Just right. own it. Just accept it. And now what makes it even better for me is Lamar Jackson will be throwing the ball, breaking people's morals. Not mm. just running it and scoring to break your heart. He's throwing the ball 40 to 50 yards deep to Julio Jones, who's mm-hmm. jumping over two defenders. And, and, and it's just, and it's just going to look so easy. Because what he's doing now, he's doing, it with, he's doing it with tier two players, tier two and, two, and tier three type uh, wide receivers. Give him that number one that when he steps on the field, like we were saying, it's, it's, you have to put a safety over top. And you have to match him down with that corner. So now you just took the safety out of the picture because he has to honor – Julio, now you have Hollywood and you have Mark Andrews all going against one-on-one coverage. Now you can have Bateman in the slot, and he's going against the third and fourth DB, and it's just him against and it's just him against him. Mm-hmm. Now you can use his talents and be like, okay, we know that you're good enough to beat this guy. Lamar Jackson knows that because we look at you as a number one. So you're number one going up against a number four DB in our eyes. We expect you to win that. Now Lamar expects you to win that. So Lamar's comfortable all around. He's comfortable mm-hmm. with Julio out there. He's comfortable with Bateman going against a four. He's now comfortable with Hollywood on 101 against that DB because uh, Hollywood has been beating DB since he came into the league. So And Lamar Jackson already has that comfortability with him. Right. We already know with Mark Andrews, he's good. So you have a comfortable Lamar back there who's going to be even more comfortable in the pocket now because he trusts his wide receivers at every section on the field. Now he trusts his line. It's, it's just gonna be beautiful music. It's like, it's nothing. It's like, give my guy that. I'm tired of seeing Baker Mayfield out here with these number one wide receivers. I'm tired <laughs> of seeing uh, Patrick Mahomes out there with all those <laughs> wide receivers. I'm tired of seeing all those guys wide receivers and they're getting praised for it. The team that they have has been built for them to be successful. Like Baker Mayfield, he had, like you have everything you need. You have two number one running backs. Mm-hmm. You have two number one wide receivers, and now you ha- you have uh, tight ends that who can be a mismatch. You have a good old line. Baker mm-hmm. has Baker Mayfield has everything that he needs to be successful. Everything. There's no excuses. That's what I want Lamar to have. Right. I want Lamar to have that. Oh, there's no excuses, Lamar. You have a number one wide receiver, Julio Jones, who's a mismatch threat against anybody. I don't care if you double cover cover him. He can go out there and jump over two or three people. And just beat everybody. I want Lamar to have that. There's no excuse, Lamar. I want to be able to come on here and be like, there's no excuses for Lamar. Mm-hmm. He has to win. There's no excuses. He's been already unstoppable with pretty much tier three, tier two uh, wide receivers. Now he has number one. Now across the board with uh, wide receiver one, wide receiver two, wide receiver three, and tight end, the Baltimore Ravens match up greatly at every section, so there's no excuses. I want, I want yeah. to be so good that. The commentators are coming in to that Sunday saying, Lamar Jackson has no excuses. <laughs> His team is built to win. And every man. fast of the game. Because we know we're built to win in the run. Right. We've been leading, we've been le- we've been leading and rushing every year. We know we're built to do that. Mm-hmm. I want to be built to shut people's mouths in the passing game. Because we know the fat Kate is oh, Lamar can't throw. This is we know that's we know that's untrue. Right. So give him a wide receiver that he knows can go out there and win mm-hmm. and watch him light the world up. Like, 
it's going to be it's going to be unfair and i'm going to love it but we have to, <laughs> but we need to we need for the baltimore ravens to just take that step because you hear people say well baltimore they, they don't do that that's not right what they, do. they don't go out there and reach well i kind of i kind of i'm pushed back at that because we've seen them go out there and reach for deandre hopkins mm-hmm. you know, it just didn't go through we've seen them do that i'm glad that we didn't reach for uh Juju, you know everybody wanted Juju. I was the guy. I was like, no, we don't. Want I know, him. I know, I wanted him for sure. Yeah, I don't want Juju. Like he's he's another number two. He, mm. he doesn't put us over the top like a Julio. Ah, uh, so you know, like, yeah, like, like Julio. I was man. so I was I was so happy he went. Back to <laughs> I didn't care where he went as long as he didn't come to Baltimore. <laughs> I didn't care where he went. I just didn't want him in Baltimore. Um, so yeah. I want that. I want Julio. I, I want Julio. Everybody knows I want Julio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. with that being said, so we talked about the good stuff that uh, the good reasons why Julio uh, would be a great fit with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, what would be some, uh, I guess, bad reasons or some reasons why he may not be the best fit uh, for the Baltimore Ravens? Well, uh, to be honest, this is a hard question because. You hear all around that he's a locker room guy. He doesn't, <laughs> he, he doesn't fight. He doesn't get mad about lack of touches. Um, injuries. That's what I think yeah. of. Injuries. But then, as myself, that's kind of one of the reasons why I wanted him in Baltimore. So it's kind of hard. I can say, yeah, injuries would be a bad reason. But why not come to a team that's not pass heavy so that would limit the treads on your legs? Mm-hmm. Why not come to a team who can win on the ground, which means we don't have to – trust you as much through the air we can let you rest a little bit but what about coming to a team who's been winning without you mm. so if you come <laughs> here we don't need you to do as much we just need you when we need you which is the playoffs you know slowly build your chemistry through the year you know mm-hmm. what i mean have your games but we really need you is in the playoffs why not come to a team who we feel like we already have a number one in rashad bateman we just have him in the slot right now because you're here if you do get hurt then we just bump him to the outside so we do take a little hit, but not as much because we already look at Bateman as a number one. So my my saying would be injuries would be a bad fit. Hmm. And and that still will kind of like not be, but injuries is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that could definitely be something to uh to consider. Um because that's that's the biggest knock uh with Sammy Watkins too. Uh it's the injury history. Yeah. yeah. Um so another thing too would be the money um and i to me the way that i look at it is a kind of thing where it's like yeah the ravens they don't normally do this this is not what they typically do even though recently eric DeCosta has been trying to change that here and there he came up a little bit short but he's been trying to change it um but in this case especially at wide receiver in baltimore ravens no better than anybody you get exactly what you pay for <laughs> you get it, you get exactly what you pay for. Ravens have uh for their entirety, they've been for the most part uh pretty cheap at the wide receiver position. Um now with Anquan Bolden that worked out cuz they gave up a third and fourth round pick for Anquan Bolden and then I believe they gave him a a new contract as well. Um but for the majority they've been pretty cheap at the wide receiver position. And you should uh, think of something. I'm I'm in control. You remember think of something. Are you good? Why have they been kind of cheap at the wide receiver position? Because out of all of our years, how many really good quarterbacks, like, I mean, <laughs> that we can be like, okay, we need to get this quarterback a number one wide receiver because he's he's elite. You know, hmm. that's why with Joe Flacco, they went out there, you know, some of those guys because they knew Joe, Joe Flacco was good. So let's get him some help. With, you know, with the Trent Guilford and those guys, you know, it was kind of like we, they're, 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 they're going to manage the game. Yeah, you know, man, we're going to win on our defense. Now that's, so let's continue to be good on defense. Let's be great on defense. It wasn't our quarterback Our quarterback is going to win us the game. It was our defense. Mm. You know. But then when Joe Flacco came in, it was like, okay, now this guy can sling the rock. Let, let, let's get him some talent You know, because yeah. we, we, we can win with him. Now you have a Lamar Jackson. It's like, we're winning with him. So let's go get him some talent. Mm-hmm. That's why I look at it because over the years, like you said, we've never been that team to go after those type of wide receivers. And I and I and my thing about that is because we've really never had that quarterback that we look at as like this is the guy, guy. Except for Joe Flacco, and that's when you see us kind of start to like 
push a little bit, you know, with the Anquan Boldens and the Steve Smith and those type guys. So now mm -hmm. you have a Lamar Jackson, who's a unanimous MVP at a young age, who has proven that he's going to win whether you give him a number one or not. Right. So now our step is like, okay, we know that he can win with little to nothing. Let's kind of, let's go get our guy some help. Let's go get, like, let's get his guys, let's get his guys some help. Because as we've seen, teams in our division has got a lot better. And I know people mm -hmm. like to poo-poo on the Browns and, oh, no, it was the Browns. And I'm sitting back here like, no, that's not the case. Do you see what they got over there? No, they, they, they stacked <laughs> over there, man. You see what Browns they got? Browns are stacked. Like, if we do not come correct, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. So, yeah. Yeah, man. And, um, yeah, with Joe Flacco, yeah, that, Bolden was one of the uh, the best receivers that they got. Derek Mason was another one, yeah, too. Yep. Um, and, and Steve Smith Sr. Mm -hmm. But then – um. Some that most of them have in common, like with Crabtree as well. Uh, a lot of the, the the number one guys that they got for him were older guys, guys on the back end of their careers. Yep. Um, but with, with that, it's been like a gift and a curse all at the same time because the Ravens, they've always been contenders uh, under yeah. Flacco. Ever since 2008, they've always been contenders. Um, so they, they've been right in the thick of things. So... I think that's been a, a huge part of the lack of development of their own wide receivers. Yeah. Because they're like, hey, we can win right now. We're ready to go right now. Let's just, we need a couple more pieces and we'd be good to go. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where they still are right now. Obviously, with Lamar, they're contenders, but they're still in the same spot where they just need a few more pieces. And I think that if they added a Julio and even a pass rusher, I know getting both would be. A little greedy, but I know he can make it work. He can make oh, it work. We've seen a, we've seen teams do <laughs> yes, some they crazy can make it work. But with um, if you add a Julio, uh, and, and then you get a, a veteran pass rusher, even if it be kind of, not necessarily even crazy, but even if they added a Julio and were like, you know what, I don't think they're gonna do it with the pass rusher. But if they did it, if they were like, you know what, we're gonna go young. We're going young at pass rush. It'd be a big risk, but at the same time, hey, you put all this work and money into your offense, so I wouldn't complain not one bit. And because you have your linebacker set. You got obviously got the secondary set. Uh, your defensive, your interior defensive line is set. So not just your edge guys and your pass rush. I mean, you got Bowser who's been around for a little while. Ferguson, question mark. Right. Um, Derek Wolf at defensive end. And, and then you will have uh, Adafe away, rookie. Um, and then Dalen Hayes, rookie. So it, it will be very, very young there. But and I, and I want to pick it back off what you said about the, mm -hmm. um, about the pass rush. This is why I wanted to go wide receiver and not even worry about the pass rush. Like, let's go out there what we know we need. Because remember what Wink said? Wink said, I don't put too much emphasis on having an actual pass rusher. I can create pass rushing with my blitzes. So I'm not too <laughs> fond about going out to get a dominant pass rush because I Wink said I know I can get to the pass rusher, rusher with the way I call plays. Mm. And that's another thing. So if we know that, let's go get a number one wide receiver because what do we do know? We do know that Greg Roman cannot really create wide receivers, you know, create them a way to get open in a sense. Mm. So let's go get a wide receiver that we know can get open without even having to create a special play for them to get open. Because we know on defense, Wink is going to create a pass rush. Right. We know on offense, Greg Roman is not really going to create a player to get open in a sense. They have to be very talented. So let's go get a very talented wide receiver. Mm. So that's why I push back at, no, we don't need a pass rusher because Wink is going to create pass rushing. And let's finally trust our pass rushers and Wink. Let's go get what we know we need. We can't trust this. We can't really trust the wide receivers because they're young. Like we, we've just the rookies and people are saying like, well, we're good. We can't trust that. I'm tired of trusting the unknown. Let's go get the known commodity. And that's Julio Jones. So that's my push that get, let's go get a pass rush. No, we got Wink. Wink can create a pass rush. And Lamar Jackson, Wink also said this. I'm glad I thought about it. Wink also said this. Lamar Jackson is our best defense because he runs out the rest of the clock the last five to 10 minutes of the game. So mm. there you go. Let's go get <laughs> Julio Jones. <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know. <laughs> and that um that that's important too because that that makes it easier for defenses because 
if the offense, if the Ravens offense can control the clock, control the ball, control the game, then they can do that. They can control the game. Uh, and that makes defenses, like they always say, the, the pass rush could pin their ears back and just get after it. Secondary could sit back and just wait for it to come to them. Yep. Um, and then Wink, of course, he can be creative and, and sending different blitzes and different pressures and whatnot uh, to the opposing team's quarterback and really make them one-dimensional. Right. Uh, so a, a powerful, strong, crazy offense. Like, And again, this team, you talked about how Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they've already been winning without a Julio Jones. But another thing that they've already been without a Julio Jones has been the number one scoring offense ever since Lamar Jackson has been the starter. That is true. Since 2019, they've been the number one scoring offense in the NFL. So you have that already. And the- <laughs> <laughs> man, oh boy, this is going to be crazy whenever he does get traded to wherever he goes, man. But if you have the number one scoring offense in the NFL the past two years and you add a Julio Jones on top of that, wouldn't even be fair, man. And that's, the, and that's the thing. I'm glad you say that because it's like scoring is not the issue. It's not the issue. Right. It's matchups when it matters. Mm. Playoffs. We know we can score points, but in the playoffs, things get a little tighter. Teams have a longer to, you know, game plan against you. We know we can score 30 and 40. We let the league in scoring. And the playoffs is about matchups. It's all about matchups. Mm. So if we don't have that elite elite on the outside, then they're gonna put eleven in the box. They're gonna put twelve in the box because it's mm. do or die. It's do or die the entire game. So we need to have something that we need to have a way to combat that and keep teams out of that desperate type of game plan mm. and that's the only way we're going to be able to do that is getting a guy that's a mission nightmare out there that's six three six four and that's proven that even if you have two defenders on him he can go over the top he's mm. also proven that he can beat you like he can win the game for you we've seen this guy put up 300 yards in the game like give him all that when the playoffs come mm. and it's nothing nobody can do you're not going to put 10 and 11 in the box you're just not going to do that Mm-hmm. Because you know that they have Julio Jones out there, and then that means you're leaving Hollywood on a one-on-one as well, and Mark Andrews, and it's just like it's pick your poison. Like you're gonna get dotted up either way. And I want that to happen so bad because I'm tired of people doubting Lamar Jackson's ability to throw the ball. We all know he can throw the ball. We've seen it. Even got the stats to prove it. It's mm-hmm. just that narrative out there that they just keep throwing out there for some odd reason that he can't. And it's like the stat got put out today, his passing percentage is actually higher than. Josh Allen, who they consider, you know, the lead of the quarterbacks, and they consider Lamar a running back. But his his passing completion is higher than his. His uh, you know, touchdown intercept interception ratio is higher than his. Like, it's you know how it goes. Like, that's why I want him to get Julio Jones, so we can finally have people realize that what you were saying, well, everybody knows it was false, but now you're seeing it on a daily basis because there's nothing you can do at all. So we'll see what happens with Julio Jones. Hopefully. Hopefully all this stuff we're talking about comes to fruition with the Baltimore Ravens, but we just got to wait and see. That is true. We have to wait and see. We have how many more days now? <laughs> well, they, they could actually, they could do it like right now, but it would just, the transaction wouldn't be official until June 1st. That is true. And so, I, would yeah. kinda, I would kind of wait to do it now because you have other teams, you know, trying to piggyback in, you know, I would wait till that June, June the 1st for, you know, so you can just go in like, okay, yeah. I want him, boom, 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 and then we're out of there. Instead of doing it now, and then you have a week or so to wait, and other teams start to try to see what's going on, and like, nah, we want to jump in there too. We'll give you a better offer. You know, wait mm. till the last minute so you won't have as much back and forth going on. That, um, that, that is another thing too because um, they could announce, and I mean, nine times out of ten, the deals go through, but they're not official yet. Yeah. So they could come to an agreement with some. That's a good point you, you bring out. They could come to an agreement with somebody, and then they could get another offer and be like, mm, you know what? Nah, we're good. We're going to go with that offer instead uh, because it wouldn't be official yet. So even though that would be bad business, it could happen. So, hey, yeah, that's a good point. Look where the Falcons are at now. I don't think they really care about what you think is bad business. They need to sign – they're rookies, and they need to get out of this situation <laughs> in the best way possible. So if that takes having a little bad blood with somebody that's not even in their division, I would, I, they would probably be okay with that because, I mean, mm. they're in a tough situation. And a little bad business never hurt nobody, when I guess, when they're benefiting, you know, because they're in a tough situation right now. And I was telling people that. I was telling, I was even telling Falcons fans that. They were like, well, we're going to get two ones for them. I'm like, eh, 
Do you know what situation yeah. you all are in? Y'all can't even sign your rookies because you have Julio Jones on your roster. You literally mm -hmm. have to get rid of him. You mm -hmm. literally have to, and everyone knows that. So everyone's going to come with, we'll give you a four, maybe a three, and at the end of the day, you're going to eventually have to do it. Right. Or unless you don't want to sign your what number two, two overall pick or, or three <laughs> overall pick or fourth, whichever one he went. Unless you want to sign your, your the best tight end coming out the draft. Yeah. Hey, pick pick, pick your choice.